Welcome aboard the North Yorkshire Moors Railway for a journey back in time to the golden age of steam. Good afternoon, can I see tickets please? Every year half a million visitors come to marvel at these miracles of Victorian engineering. I came all the way from Ireland for this. Keeping it all on track are a dedicated team full of pride, passion and true Yorkshire grit. Oh, be honest, we love it. Engine shed manager Piglet is in charge of all things mechanical. I've just pranged it into the side of the building. Got that Miley Cyrus song in my head now. Boss Chris has to balance the books. I'm not the fat controller. Signalman Alistair works the points. No rest for the wicked. Head of carriage and wagon Kieran makes sure the punters travel in style. I'm very good at style, you see. I mean, I'm style icon. <laughs> this time. There are some spooky goings on at the railway. Have we got any other witches in the carriage? <laughs> but nothing's going to plan. The main big fix would be to actually strip the whole wiring out and start again because it's just rubbish. I've just broken the signal box. And Alistair has his own crisis. Worst case scenario, you're talking derailment. It's a roller coaster ride through glorious country. The Yorkshire Steam Railway. All aboard. You've got a ticket for the dog. It's autumn on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. To keep passenger numbers rolling in during the quieter winter months, the railway focuses on special events. And tonight's hot ticket is the curry train. But at the moment, it's not going anywhere. So what we're doing now is trying to get the lights working for the curry train tonight. The carriage lighting is packed in. Well, it's Tim's train, this, so I'm doing my best. And as head of coach and wagon, it's Kieran Murray's job to fix it. Every time, isn't it? To add to the pressure, tonight's curry train is the busiest it's ever been. About 150 people on here tonight. Right. Have you? Yeah. Oh, right, else, it's a busy train. Yeah. Holy well, 65 you... curry. Wow. 80 odd fish and chips. So events manager Tim has a sweetener for Kieran. If it all goes to plan, you can have some fish and chips. Oh, Tim. The problem is that the carriage's batteries are dead as a dodo. So just like when you've got a flat battery on your car, Kieran's got to give them a boost. So we're trying to get a battery charge on it first, get some life into these batteries and see how long they actually last. It's not just the steam engines that are heritage on the railway. At over a century, some of these wooden carriages are older than the locos. Keeping these and the 40 other Kieran looks after fit for service is a constant battle. The issue is you just don't get the charging that you actually need. So you're constantly having to top them up. And obviously when you're topping up, then you blow fuses and bits and bobs like that. So that's what today is about. And there's nothing like a crowd when you're under pressure. Yeah, yeah, seems to have an audience, you know what I mean? They've all come to see me, obviously. With less than an hour to departure, you better get a shifty on, Kieran. It's a different story over at the engine shed. It's been a great season for Piglet and his team. For the first time, he's ended up with more engines than he started with. Sitting pretty, he's even got time to spend with the other woman in his life. Mini steam engine Lucy, who he's been lovingly restoring for the past year. I'm just getting a good few coats of undercoat on Lucy's roof while I've got the opportunity and I've, uh, I've managed to sneak it into the boiler shop. But Lucy's arrival into Piglet's world didn't go down too well with the other lady in his life, the missus. She thought I meant, like, a model. A miniature one? Yeah, but when I actually told her it's a full-size small one... Um, Is that yeah, 24 metres long? She went airborne. Yeah, she's, she's, she's all right now, but I've had to buy her a new car to keep the peace. So I've not got no spare money now for as long as I live. <laughs> Mrs wants me to sort of be at home and be a family man as well, and it's just like there ain't enough minutes in a day, really, in a week. I, I could do it, like, sort of eight or nine days a week, and then I, I'd actually be able to uh, get more done, you know? I don't know, these people who say they've got now to do and they're bored and that, I mean, there's... Buy a steam engine, that'll keep you occupied. Sound advice, Piglet. It's a bit of a job, actually, cos it's, it's quite a big roof and uh, I've only got a small brush, so it's taken me a bit of time to do it. Yeah. But after a year of sharing Piglet with Lucy, 
His wife's patience is wearing thin. Time for some crafty delegation. Surely there's someone that can lend a hand. Couple of junior volunteers, maybe. All right, lads, how are we getting on? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Doing a cracking job there, like. Cheers. Looks, Thank looks you. excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, are you nearly done then here? At the... uh, yeah, yeah, I think there's a bit more work to yeah, do right. inside. What I'm after is a bit of hand. Right. right. I've got some small paintbrushes here, they are only small, but I'm trying to paint my roof before my missus turns up and drags me away. So I could just do with Anne doing a bit of detail painting work. Yeah. Just, yeah. just undercoat, but just yeah. around the edge of my cap. But I'd like to borrow a few for yeah, a few sure. minutes. Thank you very much. Nicely done, Piglet. <laughs> Back at Pickering, passengers are now arriving for tonight's curry train. There's not long before the train is due to leave. Fingers crossed. So time to see if Kieran's boosters have done the trick. Yay! We have lights. Lights, camera, action. But what's that saying about counting your chickens? Moment of truth. Now we'll take the power off them and see if they can hold their own supply. This train's got to go. No more time left. With the charges off, Kieran double checks the lights. Nothing. So it's dropped. The amps are dropped straight away. The batteries haven't charged. Oh, Kieran, have you got all my lights working? Yeah, the work is brilliant. Are you sure? Yeah. This is a hundred year old coaches. It's all part of the heritage experience, you know what I mean? It's a hundred-year-old coach what runs every single day. Hello there. Hello. Is it for curry? There it is. Looks like Kieran's gonna have to come up with a plan B. It's curry night on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Specials like this are a vital way of bringing in late-season cash. But the carriage lights... The amps are dropped straight away. ...have stopped working. Ever resourceful, events manager Tim... Oh, who put that there? ..has come up with a backup plan. Some of the coaches aren't charging, so we've resorted to Christmas lights uh, in three of the four coaches that we're using tonight. Yeah. It's going to be subdued lighting, I think, because uh, they're not exactly bright. Uh, but it'll be atmospheric. To make matters worse, it's the busiest curry night the railway has ever put on. Cancelling the service is not an option. Can we clear the kitchen, please? We normally have about uh, 100 people on board, but tonight we've got 140. Then we've got table service as well as people coming to our tiny bar. There's no lighting there either, but at least the bar staff are prepared. I have a small uh, torch. And we have some emergency lights in the kitchen for washing up. Are there not wine glasses down there? Where are we looking? We can't see down here, Tim. It's so dark. <laughs> so it's, it's all all right. I mean, it's just going to be like wartime conditions. Keep calmer and carry on. I think sunset's about 7.15, so two and a half hours of the journey is pretty much going to be in darkness. Um, but hopefully the lights that we've got will be... Uh, sufficient. And to top it off, now Tim has another problem. How many now? Just waiting for one, two, and how, Sam? Two passengers are in danger of missing the train. It's gone our departure time now, so unfortunately, if this couple do turn up, then um, I'm afraid. Hey, hang on, I'm travelling! But whether it's passengers or the boss... Jesus Christ! ..the curry train waits for no man. <laughs> Fifteen minutes into the journey and the light is fading. Well, the sun's almost down and it's almost dark now and so it is going to be an issue. Hi there. Hi, mate. Um, we've had a bit of an issue with lighting. Just as Tim breaks the bad news... Uh, ..the erratic lights come on. Don't get too, don't get too excited. <laughs> it's, it's not going to last. 
It doesn't. And then some of Tim's backup lights pack up. Um, as you can see, plan B didn't work either because these fairy lights aren't working. <laughs> Lighting or not, they need to get the food out. Has everyone got their um, pop drums? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like? Yeah. Can I get a bottle of white and a bottle of red, please? A large one. Uh, the biggest bottle you've got. Yeah. Can I just check this for you? Hang on a sec, let me put my torch on. So, am I with you? Is it chicken and uh, lamb? That's right. Which is the chicken? It's a curry lucky dip. With the last of the plates out, it's been a night to remember. So we're back into Pickering now. 140 people, I think 99% of them are happy. This trouble with the fairy lights on the trip. What a tangent. It'd probably be more of an issue for us, to be honest, from a working environment. I think we've all earned a drink tonight. The next morning at the engine shed, it's trainee Boilersmith Emma's first day back after maternity leave. It's hard being a, a mum, you have that, that bond with your baby and, and she's not there. It's hard. It is hard. Before baby Matilda was born, Emma was the country's only female trainee Boilersmith. Motherhood hasn't dampened her burning desire to work in steam. I would absolutely love to be a Boilersmith still. I think my plans have been put on hold, but I don't think that they've gone anywhere. It's not going to be a gentle introduction back to this tough physical world. One of the boilers is undergoing a renovation and needs the angle ring removed. So my job this morning is I've got to burn off the heads of these rivets, and then I'm going to get an air tool and try not to kill myself while I knock them out. It's a tough job is this one to start off with, but um, hopefully I manage to get the hang of it quite quickly. New husband and head boilersmith Mark is on hand to keep an eye on Emma. But he's not going easy on her. So, chuck her in the deep end. She's got a boiler there. There's rivets to burn out. She's not too keen on burning rivets. She's a bit nervous. So, uh, the only way she's going to learn it is by doing it. The final job is to knock the now rivetless ring off the boiler, which naturally involves another heavy tool. Big Emma. Go on, lass, nearly there. Every day she gets down on one knee, gives me a ring. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a gruelling first day back. <sighs> yep. I feel successful. You know, I managed it really well. Obviously, leaving Matilda is hard. To be able to have achieved something today makes it worth it. It costs £135,000 a week to keep the railway on track, so the quest for innovative ways to bring in extra cash is never-ending. Today, Head of Marketing Laura is off to promote the newest event on the railway's calendar, Halloween. They first ran the event last year, but it didn't go well. So last year was its first year, and um, we did cancel services, but the services that we did run um, everyone walked away, from my point of view, very happy. This year, Laura's planning a bigger and better event. But at £20 a head, sales have been slow. So we're going to Minster FM to publicise Halloween. Um, 
it's it's quite a good channel to be honest. It works really well in this area. We'll have sunshine, a little bit of light rain as well. Mentor FM Breakfast, Friday morning at Halloween, half term upon us, and I've got Laura Strangeway from North Yorkshire Moors Railway with me this morning. Morning, Laura. Okay. So you've got some spooky goings on at North Yorkshire Moors Railway. What's happening? We've got um, our Halloween train, which is the night of steam and scream. So you can board the train at Pickering, have a scary steam journey through to Levisham, and there's onboard actors. You get to have your pat lunch on board. Um, you can learn a little bit more about Wendy the Witch and Vinnie the Vegan. Um, and uh, yeah, just book and come along and have a really, truly great, uh, great night out. Really. Okay. You have a vegan on board. Vinny the vegan vampire. I mean, that sounds frightening in itself. Um, come in fancy dress and join in, and parents as well. You know, we want them to come in fancy dress. It's a real immersive night on a yeah, a steam and scream. Good stuff. All right. So if you want to see that spooky going on, you can join the Halloween train at North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Laura, thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. See you on the Halloween train. If you dare. The last thing Kieran needed was an event requiring even more power. This coach has got a lot to do, and uh, at the moment, this is not fit to do anything with. As well as the regular lighting, Laura's Halloween show will need a PA system complete with 10 speakers. It's a tall order, but after the embarrassment of curry night, Kieran's pulling out all the stops. So I've got our two electricians here, both volunteers. They come one day a week, but I've been cheeky. I've rung them up saying, can you help me out here? I'm stuck. Modern electrics going into old wiring, you know what I mean? The two don't get on together. They don't blend. Yeah, so the main big fix would be to actually uh, strip the whole wiring out and start again, because it's just rubbish. It's nonsense. But we just haven't got time, unfortunately. With the event in just two days' time, what Kieran needs is some divine intervention. On Pickering platform, that's what they're just about to get. We well, yeah, have an interesting day today. We've uh, certainly out of the, un out of the usual. Uh, we've got the Bishop of Wakefield coming up to um, to bless uh, Eric Tracy, uh, our locomotive. Engine blessings were commonplace in the early days of rail, when steam was thought unreliable and sometimes dangerous. It's uh, not. The thing we're used to seeing every day, but it, it is nice to have these events and get the railway recognised a little bit more, get it out in the public a little bit more. It's a bit newsworthy. Eric is being blessed today because the engine has only recently come back into service after a half million pound overhaul. The real Eric Tracy was the Bishop of Wakefield, and it's very nice that today the Bishop of Wakefield comes in to, to bless the locomotive. It's a big day, and even the staff have put on their best bib and tucker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at the state of you, man. You look like you should be on a ship. Probably a rough idea, yeah. You've got a usual court jacket on us. Yeah. While Chris heads off to find the bishop, Piglet checks he has all the essentials. Spectacles, testicles, watch wallet and badge. Yeah, please. Badge and bishop in place, time to get on with the main event. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, coming here today. Um, it is fantastic to welcome you all here. Thank you very much for coming. It's not very often we get a chance to, to bless a steam locomotive, and, and I would say that on this occasion it, it, it helps because divine intervention is, is something we rely on very often to keep this railway <laughs> running. So thank you very much indeed, Tony, for coming That's along. Right, thank you. you. Almighty everlasting God, bless this engine, named in memory of Bishop Eric Tracy. It is nice to, to see, you know, a blessing on the locomotive, you know, asking God to watch over it. Amen. But in reality, we have to be realistic and realise that it's the guys at the MPD that watch over that locomotive and keep it running. Before the bishop dashes off, there's just time for a quick photo op. No, if you're going to do a selfie, you've got to do, do a it, selfie. You've got to do it yourself. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to do that. There we go, like that. We need then, selfies. Yeah. There we go. Everyone smile. Happy days. Back at carriage and wagon, with neither half a million quid or a blessing to count on, poor Kieran's still struggling to get the carriages ready for Halloween. Doesn't look very scary at the moment, does it? Um, no. With the Halloween train starting tomorrow, Laura's come to check that everything's on track for what's going to be the last big event of the season. 
we're relying on you, Kieran, to make sure that there's power and music. You know, if, if it trips and it doesn't come back on, this is literally all we have to light the whole service. The whole idea is it's meant to be scary and dark, isn't it? That's why I want to go on it. But they have to be able to also see the actors, Kieran. The actors should be day glow and you could see them. There you go, see, you haven't thought of that one, have you? You've got, got them all in day glow costumes, they could be all raving around. Not convinced by Kieran's day glow idea, Laura has insisted on something more reliable. What we've done is uh, we've actually fitted an inverter in here now so it can run your normal household plug sockets. So then we can power our amplifier and then we can put ghosty sounds through it, stuff like that. But the worry is that the power inverter might overload the already temperamental electrics. So we've just fitted the inverter in here now. So we're just trying it out, make sure it all works. So we'll see what happens. So you've got to give it time to build it up. It checks itself, and if it works, there you go. You've got a green light. Greens means good. That's that bit. So we've got power. That's a good start. Time to test the PA system. Well, we have no power. Well, there you go. Oh well, mate, hopefully it's just tripped. That should work now in theory. Yes, we've got power. Right. It's tripped out. What's going on there? So as soon as I went to put music through it, it tripped out. The 60-year-old carriages are proving an uphill battle for poor Kieran. But with the Halloween event starting tomorrow, he'll need to come up with a solution, and fast. It's now late autumn on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. It's getting cold in the old signal box at Gromont. I think we'll have the fire on today because it's, you know, it's only a couple of degrees outside and... You know, you can always find coal. Oh, well, something to burn anyway. Bits of wood, old bits of paper. In the past, witches, we like burning witches around here as well, you know. The change in season brings new challenges for signalman Alistair. Well, hey, well, that was a good one. Now, open the gate. Oh, took, took the catch off the gate, and they jumped about four feet. Now, it's quite a strong crosswind. Adds 15 or 20 pounds to the gate wheel at the moment. It's, uh, it's ever so heavy. And there's another worry: that old chestnut leaves on the line. Being autumn, you're going to have traction issues because the rails are damp and slimy and horrible and all those lovely leaves are falling everywhere as well, because, believe it or not, leaves on the line are actually a real-world problem. Yeah, there'll be a bit of, you know, a bit of like mush on the railhead. It's all been pulped together. If that's the railhead, that's the contamination, and one of the wheels is, um, isn't making the electrical contact in its um, sub-track circuit from working. Mushy leaves can be a very serious problem. You know, best-case scenario, you talk, you know, somebody's got to come down and unbend all the point work, Worst case scenario, you're talking derailment. There have been accidents in the past. Quintins Hill springs to mind. It was a troop train coming from the north that sort of ploughed into all the other stuff. And it was all gas lit and all the gas tanks went up. And the survivors grabbed the rifles and they were shooting the guys being burnt alive in the coaches. Absolutely horrendous accident. The worst ever British railway disaster. Thankfully, such accidents are rare. But a signalman always has to be on his metal. Yep, I did not like that at all. OK, check, check, check. Sorry, right, I've just broken the signal box, pulled the lever and nothing's happened. The signal box isn't recognising the oncoming train. It's probably something to do with railhead contamination. I think what's happened is it's confused the electric brain of the signal box and uh, it won't let me have the signal. A potentially dangerous situation. Alistair has got to act fast. The route's all set, all the points are locked, but the signal said, I'm not playing. So we do it the old-fashioned way with the, uh, with the green battle standard instead. Authorises him to pass the signal at danger. This is exactly why leaving the line are a problem. It's one of the joys of, uh, joys of it all. It looks like Alistair's going to have a busy shift. On 
the train to Gromont is Bertie Blower, NYMR's oldest volunteer ticket inspector. Bert's loved steam since he was a boy. Um, I used to see the trains coming out of King's Cross, getting, taking the train numbers and taking the names of the engines. In my old life, I'm back to playing trains, which is lovely. There's no uniform and no punching tickets today because Bert's off to fulfill a bit of a lifelong dream. In nearly 75 years of loving steam, Bert's never seen a steam engine up close and personal. But today he's going to get the full works from none other than Shed Boss Piglet. Hi, up, Bert. Nice to meet you. Come yeah. to have a look round then. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited about coming and having a look around this morning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got plenty of engines here to look oh, at. Oh, good. So that's, that, that's lovely. I, I've never seen any anything like this before, an engine like all stripped down. So you see it, the railway in a completely different light to me, because this is more my kind of thing, when yes, they're incomplete yeah. and... When they're all, all in, in pieces. All in pieces. Yes, I prefer really. them when they're completely together like... But, you, yeah. you, you do. Well, I suppose you would, really. They're less yes. hassle when they're in one piece. <laughs> Bert's like a kid in a sweet shop. I'm just looking in there. I've never seen him one of those Have like you not? that. You've not no. seen those smart box? No. Yeah, the inner panels oh. of the engine. It's cool, isn't it? That certainly is. You can go in here if you want. No, you no, 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 no. I don't want to close one. <laughs> Climbing inside an engine might be pushing it a bit for Bert, but Piglet has something else to show him. His own mini steam engine, Lucy. So... This is my little baby. Oh, oh, this is your one, is it? Yeah, this is the lady I spend most of my time with at the moment, rather than the wife. What a lovely thing to be able to own. Ho own your own steam engine. That must be marvellous. And the enjoyment that he must get out of it is fantastic. <laughs> The tour isn't complete without going out into the yard. Oh, look at this. This is the, the wheel, what they call the wheel drop, is it? Yeah, this is, is the wheel drop, yeah. yeah. We use it for getting wheels out. You then realise, once the wheels are out there, when you see a bloke working on it, you realise how big they are. They are, aren't they? Yeah, <gasps> so... A bit like going to quick fit and getting a new set of tyres on. Yeah, I suppose it is. We can almost do it same with the <laughs> steam engine. Piglet and Bert might work at very different sides of the railway, but there's one subject that unites them. Well, that's, a, that's another thing, the money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the cost of it. You it's just phenomenal. Yeah. It really is. Um, that's why we need plenty that's of bums it. on seats and you keeping the general punters well, happy. Well, we're dead. Because it's I'll, them I'll that keep this going. I'll, I'll try and keep them as happy as I can. Yeah. <laughs> keep spending. <laughs> yeah, we, yes. You know, oh, yes. We need it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty obvious that you really love your job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got to do in this, you yes. know. But you can't, not can you, you know. It's, it's, oh, no, it's, no. It's, 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 it's that kind of job, you know. You wake <laughs> up in the morning thinking about boilers and fire grates and boiler tubes and wheels and tyres and all kinds of things, you know. Oh, it's been fantastic. I've had a lovely day and it, it's been a wonderful experience. It really has. It's Halloween, and over at Pickering, head of marketing Laura... Are you jumping up? ..is preparing for the railway's last big event of the year. We've got the Halloween train due in in about 20 minutes, so the actors will be on board, you know, um, singing, dancing, telling spooky stories. It looks like Laura's marketing push has done the trick. The event is almost a sellout. We've had quite a lot of walk-up guests today booking onto the train for this evening, so I'm pretty pleased, to be honest. My plan is jump on board and just make sure, you know, from my point of view, that everything's going all right. The big worry has been the carriage's dodgy old electrics. But Kieran is confident he's fixed them. Right, you ready? Right, here we go. I was kind of lucky. You're looking the part, aren't you? <laughs> Let there be light. Hallelujah. As passengers start to board, time to do a final check on the PA system. Cheers, thank you. I would... What's up? What's gone wrong? It's tripped the electrics and the carriages are thrown into darkness. It should all light up all the way. Kieran, can you switch the top ones on? 
If Kieran can't fix it in the next few minutes, Laura will have to cancel the event. Over at Gromont, signalman Alistair's also been having problems. Signal's just failed again. Bollocks. Bloody thing. Right, we'll do it the hard way. Now it's too dark for the oncoming train to see a flag. Hoping you can see me through that lot. I used the green flag earlier, but because it's now twilight, I haven't used a hand lamp. There we go. Crisis averted, Alistair has a moment to reflect. It's my hundredth day in the signal box this season. That's like 1,000, 1,100 man hours. I see more of this signal box than I do of my wife. Um, you know, I mean, I sometimes wonder if I'm married to the signal box or the, um, or the wife. Um, to be fair, the signal box is probably a better cook, but, um, you know, the wife keeps me warm at night. Back at Pickering with just five minutes until departure, Kieran is still battling to get the power back. So, unfortunately, the amplifier is tripping out. So, we've just changed it now, changed the plug on it, changed the extension. I think it's actually extension itself. Kieran's managed to find a new extension cable. So, it's fingers crossed again. There you go. That's working. Looks like he's finally fixed it. All the passengers have boarded, so the Scream and Steam Express can finally set off. But there's one person who won't be joining them. No, you're not. You're yeah, such I'm a weird. You know, stay on. You need a conky for you. I can't, honestly, I can't. <laughs> like a fear of clowns, eh? Horrible as well. <laughs> can't stand clowns. Ronald McDonald used to horror me as a kid. What? <laughs> Lights are good, amplifiers good, um, passengers on board looking pretty good. Let's just hope everyone has a <laughs> spooky train. Time for the show. <laughs> passengers are treated to a Halloween themed snack box, a goodie bag, and live entertainment. One, two, They all have a story and they rotate across the carriages, so there's a different story continuously, but they all kind of link together. That's right. No meat at all. Oh, I know, I know. We all said we would be vegan vampires. But I have tried all the vegetables and the fruits. Oh. And hopefully we'll have these children. Um, I've had just a great time and just had fun and enjoyed Halloween. Have we got any other witches in the carriage? And they go away happy. And the old engine is doing its bit to make this a ghost train to remember. First thing about the Halloween train, um, you get a little bit of steam, and, and you can see it, look, it's just coming. Three special effects, you can't get better than that. As this ghost of the past rolls to its final stop, the Halloween train has been a great success. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was really good. It was really good. You liked it, didn't you? Yeah. What did you think to it? It was so good. You have to be honest, good effort. We finally done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> At the engine shed of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, Piglet is preparing the engines to go out for the last day of the season. Could be the last engine I drive uh, this season. It's the only one in the world. There isn't another one of these. It's the only P3 in existence. So this is a, a northeastern engine, so this was very much 
the kind of engine that ran around this part of the world back in the day, back in the 60s. Piglet's engines have covered nearly 83,000 miles this season. That's more than three times around the Earth. It's an extraordinary achievement when you remember steam was officially scrapped 50 years ago this year. Do you want to have a look at that, Daniel, and just let me know if it's in the right place? Is it all right? Oh, that was a good guess, wasn't it? Some people think it's skill, but that was just sheer fluke. That stopped it in exactly the right position. But, uh... For once, it's not the trains that are driving Piglet to distraction. I've got some... I must have a bit of steel poking through this jumper, which is scratching my belly button. It's not made me nipple, though, so I'm all right. Yeah, it's a good jumper, this, yeah. There's no point buying good clothes for work, is there, you know? We get, we get donated clothing and stuff like that, so we can, we can just take them out of the rag bin and stuff. We recycle well here. But, uh, yeah. You get dresses and all sorts out of rag bin, like. I've, I've been known to wear one of them once or twice, but uh, they're not that practical for operating a steam engine a dress, cos all your legs are exposed and your air gets singed off your legs with fire and that, so... Sounds like Piglet needs a rest, along with his engines. Over at Pickering, one of the line's oldest volunteers, 83-year-old travelling ticket inspector Bert Blower, is signing on for the last duty of the year. Good morning. Here we are again for another exciting day. Yeah. Pickering's answer to Brad Pitt. Oh, son. How you doing, mate? Mm -hmm. oh, Don't you film that, will you? <laughs> Even on a chilly late autumn day, it looks like it's going to be busy. Everyone seems a bit demob happy. <laughs> I'm going to have a mirror on my shoulder so I can see behind me. <laughs> that was Dave Tibbet, the guard, who every time sees me. Tips my hat off if he gets a chance. <laughs> they all take the mickey out of me. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much. All the way to sunny Whitby. Yeah. Well, it's sunny today. It it's sunny. It might be cold. I'm going to say, it'll be, a bit, it'll be a bit chilly. Right, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Chilly, but lovely. Now, do you know there's a refreshment car next door if you need it? Right. Oh, I didn't mention that. that. There should be a mobile snack service, but the long season has even taken its toll on the trolley. There is a trolley service on the train, but the trolley's not working. It's got a broken wheel. <laughs> Which is very useful, but the trolley man is on the train. <laughs> I'm going to glue this on. Also at Whitby, events manager Tim has got his last charter train of the year. So you can go on here and go left. Right. Here and left. And it's an unusual one. The ukulele express. 150 ukulele players strumming and singing all the way from Whitby to Pickering and back. <laughs> You've got to love a ukulele, right? The ukulele express is a popular event, but Tim won't be strumming with them. I play the piano quite badly. I like a bit of musical theatre. For, for many people, they have an interest in, in steam and then, then they start playing the ukulele and then it, this is kind of like their dream trip, really. It's nice to be here and, and uh, being part of a special final weekend. No, ain't gonna study for a My work here is done. 
I wonder if they know any Britney Spears. <laughs> Back at Pickering, Big Boss Chris is doing his rounds for the last time. The NYMR has come a long way from when it was started five decades ago by a handful of volunteers. The same dedication and passion still drives the railway today. At the end of the day, people do this not because we pay them, but purely because of the love of steam, the love of railways in, from the past, and making sure that the future generations can see those railways from the past. From guards to drivers, boilersmiths to bartenders, collectively the volunteers have put in a staggering 160,000 hours this year. Oh, okay. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. To me right is appreciated. You'll get your reward in heaven because you'll get nothing here. <laughs> from my point of view, at the end of a year, if you can sit in November and say you've got books that are balanced, and budgets that are balanced, then you're a very happy general manager. As the final day of the season draws in, ticket inspector Bert is about to start his very last run. And when we reach Pickering, that will be the end of my day. And also, it will be the end of a very successful, enjoyable year on the railway. Are we moving? Yes, we are. Good. I thought it was that one. Unfortunately, the curse of Kieran's dodgy electrics has struck again. We don't provide candles. Well, I've spent this suit for <laughs> The lights aren't working in one of the carriages, and the journey quickly descends from gloom to pitch black. I would hope to. Uh, finish my year on, on a high, but uh, having to go back to Pickering in semi-darkness, and in some carriages, total darkness, um, it's a different ending to the year. But in classic British bulldog spirit, no one seems to mind. Next experience we haven't had before, so we've had a fantastic day. Really enjoyed it. Eventually, they make it back to Pickering. OK, all well, no, we don't want you to drop it down there, do we? Cheers, thank you. Right, OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Sorry about all the trouble. That's been great. Good, as long as you've enjoyed it. That's it. Fearing he might have a train full of unhappy customers, Boss Chris has come to greet it. But it turns out, from what Bert has been saying, and that the passengers have been fairly good The passengers have, have been, been wonderful. We've had no, no complaints. Um, some of them said they've even enjoyed the experience. There is lovely. You can never win. But as I always say, most passengers on, on the railway, whenever, whenever I've been on, are very, very friendly. They want to out for a good day, and this is what we aim to give them, a good day. Providing we can do that, we're in success. That's good. How can we go wrong with that attitude, eh? <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you very much. Back at the engine shed, the last loco has been tucked away for the winter. This is my 22nd season, but I always find it a little bit sad when we stop running trains, you know. There's a lot of grit and determination with all the staff and volunteers to make sure that these things keep running, these keep steaming through Yorkshire. You know, we're not going to let that sort of end, and not, not in my lifetime, you know. As long as, we, as long as we've got the will and the passion and the desire, these things will carry on going. But, uh, I am going to have to go get my tea now, cos missus will be going spare, so, yeah. But good end to a season. Yeah, please. Right, time to go home. Need a cup of tea. Whoa! <laughs>